Hi there, Freedom One, HearingGod.tv. Welcome for another wonderful week of interceding on behalf of the saints. Praise God. Oh, let's get into some prayer, huh? I mean, getting some attack stuff lately. My ear's doing that weird thing where it hurts. Oh, Jesus, we just honor in, and we thank and we praise you. We honor you, Lord Jesus, for all that you are. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much, you uphold us so much, and we ask, Lord, that you would just help us to bend our will, all that we are, to line up with your perfect truth. Thank you, Jesus, and we just ask that you would have your way in this broadcast this day, that you would lead it, that you would guide it, that we would grow, that we would be edified, and that we would be healed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Awesome. All right. Uh, I don't know that I really got any praise reports this week. Um, I can say that uh, the week before last, we had prayed for Gloria, and she was asking for prayer for a friend of hers. And she was at saying that her friend needs revelation of the love of God through Jesus to her. She needs God's favor and mercy in court, which was September the 28th. And I asked her, well, how are things going with that? And she said that uh, the court date was postponed again. So there's more time for God to work. So I don't look at it as a bad thing. Um, and I don't know the whole situation. But I know that the, the Lord Jesus loves Gloria. And that he honors the prayers of his saints. And uh, Gloria is is she she sees that Jesus wants this friend of hers and so we just agree we agree for when her court date comes up again whenever that is that um, that there be a fair judgment whether she's paying for things that she's mistakes she's made or whatever but that fairness happen and we uh, ask that the, the judges and, and whoever, you know, lawyers or whatever is involved, that uh, we just invite the angels to come into that courtroom. Even as we're speaking it now, we're looking ahead and we're just asking uh, that whatever happened, that truly uh, the love of Jesus be manifest to her. Does she see that Jesus cares for her deeply and wants the best for her? So we just thank you, Jesus. Move on her behalf, Lord Jesus. We just speak salvation over this woman. Thank you, Jesus, that your hand is not too far to save. Brenda can bless Gloria for upholding her friend and, and give her honor, Lord Jesus. And give her peace. And that joy. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It is a prayer request for Nick, who wants to walk in greater faith. And so, as all of you were raising your hand and saying, Me too, me too, me too. And that's when all of our problems started. Isn't that interesting? So, Lord Jesus, we just agree. That we indeed do desire to walk in greater faith as well. So, Lord Jesus, we just, we just submit ourselves to you. And we thank you that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word of God. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. 
We just ask in these days, in these times, that you will draw us to your word. Lord Jesus, we just receive words of knowledge from your scripture. That that blessing, that you will impart us with just that scripture we need that will shatter the enemy's camp. Just that scripture we need that will bring forth that healing, that will bring forth that faith. We receive it, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for a greater impartation of faith through your word. Thank you, Jesus, that it comes from your word. You say you write your word within our hearts. We receive that, Lord Jesus. We just ask that you would give us greater understanding and along with that a greater hunger to seek after you, to chase you down for when you give us a little tease of something, Lord Jesus, that we will go after it. Grow that faith in us, Lord Jesus. Grow that faith in us, Lord Jesus. We receive all that you have for us. So, amen to greater faith. All right. Uh, I, I have a prayer for Don. And... Uh, Perhaps there are quite many people uh, in, in a situation as such when a person you marry somehow changes on you. And it, it's believed that this person um, that Don married uh, has like some uh, mental illness down the line or something but it's just the way it reared its ugly head it just it came out of nowhere so all of the before marriage stuff was fine and then all of a sudden this bipolar kind of thing came up and so just turn and attack and a lot of abuse um, and so Jesus, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This is very hard stuff. And I'm not going to agree to dissolve a marriage, because that's, you know, that's between God and everything. And we know full well that God can heal and bring things. And we also know that a person has to want to be free of that. They have to recognize that they're manifesting a bad fruit and that it's not good and they have to want out so that's kind of formulating our prayer topics here right so I first and foremost am led to pray for Don's heart um, you know heart open wide the one you love and out of nowhere this just they're used as a weapon uh, by the enemy and so, we indeed pray, Lord Jesus, for your covering of love. We just ask that your mighty blood would cover over the multitude of sins, the, the multitude of, of these woundings, Lord Jesus. That, they would even, that your blood would even erase, fill in all those pits and even erase Thank you, Lord Jesus. Build Don up, for he is treasured in your kingdom. He is not, not despised. And of course, his wife, 
And whatever ends up happening, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that, you know, you're not bound under a, a legalism. Uh, you want the best for us, Lord Jesus. And so we just ask for your hand upon his wife, Lord God. We cannot make her choose to want to walk in your ways. Not only talk, but to do the things that you say. So, Lord Jesus, we ask for divine revelation that she see and know without a shadow of a doubt this fruit. We ask, Lord Jesus, that this revelation of the fruit, we indeed agree that it would bring her to a humble estate in knowing that she needs you, that she would turn and choose life. That she would recognize the destructive nature of it. Because whether a mental illness or what, we do know, we do know you have built that in us. Where we feel bad, where we know that we know. So, Lord Jesus, I pray that that choice be made. You want us hot or turned off. And we do intercede on her behalf that she humble herself and reach out for healing. Reach out for you and that she grow hot for you, Lord God. We pray your uh, blessing upon them both in all that they do. We also pray for healing on her part too. Whatever has brought this on and how these spirits, whether generationally or, or whatever it is, of however that they have latched on, we just ask, Lord Jesus, for your intervention. That any any loose ends be revealed. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. All right. Um, and with and having saying said that, um, I was in a prayer. I was praying for a person and pondering their situation, and the Lord showed me a quick vision of them standing there, like there was this transparent film, and it was like in front of them like a like a glass film in front of them and it was between them and whoever saw them and what i saw i could see you know i could see it from a side view i could see them perfectly fine but then they turn and i could see this film turn with them and it's like the there was this murky um like it was just, it had this sickly green color and it was murky. It's hard to see them. And, um, you know, this ties in with the last prayer for Don as well. And what is this murk like? It's like a poison. It's like judgments, accusations. It's all things the enemy has hurled against you. Um... And I want to have an example. I got my dry wipe board up on the wall. And I see my husband's written stuff on it, so I'm not going to use it as an example because I don't want to erase his important stuff off and then try and remember what I erased. But yeah, I got this little dry wipe board. And I picture it like if you print yourself on there with uh, permanent ink, but then this green murky stuff is like all those things assaulting and hurled. But why is it sticking? Why is it not erased off? 
that that part I don't know is that because it's it's stuck and it's a perceived thing it's a belief thing are the wounds anchoring that facade there what is it so with Don and with anyone else um, you know what I'm talking about uh, we're gonna pray to wipe this off but, but in, in much the same way that when we were praying for Don we plead the blood of Jesus you see us one way Lord Jesus and if we have a wrong way of seeing things if we are seeing it through the lens of the wounding of the hurt of the accusations of lies and where we are weak and where we have allowed our emotions to get involved we ask Lord Jesus that by your power that you would take that board and cleanse it with your precious blood we invite you in Lord Jesus to come and wipe that completely clean for who we are we are thank you Lord Jesus we are your ambassadors we are the apple of your eye that goes forth preaching your good news and doing your wonders it is in you we find our love and we bubble up and display that to all whom we see so we ask just even as we are clearing this this film off it is no longer identity with us any longer and the antidote for that poison is the blood of Jesus which renders it completely useless we thank and praise you Lord Jesus we receive that we thank you, Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would polish that surface so that there won't be any pits for any of that mucky, mucky stuff to hang on and to leave any residue on our souls. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and we welcome your healing, your complete healing of our souls. We declare there is no longer that projection of where we were are bouncing a mirror at what people are saying to us, that it comes from us, but that it smacks that wall and falls off forever. And what is seen is only your glory. Only your projection, Lord Jesus, for we are in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing, deep healing within our souls. Thank you, O lover of our souls. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Good stuff. All right. We are going to pray for James's granddaughter her name is London and her right kidney is not functioning very well and so she has had multiple surgeries uh, the last one was was able to be avoided um, I believe because James has been such a diehard prayer warrior. Praise God for the prayers of the saints. But we look into that kidney area in the mighty name of Jesus. All the connecting tubes to that renal gland in the mighty name of Jesus. 
proper functioning a strength to all of the connecting tubes kidney in the mighty name of Jesus we just command you to be perfect as he is perfect any parts that have uh, dysfunction we call forth new parts perfectly functioning kidney and all and all that it is we speak life to all the tissue all the surrounding organs and no damage we declare that all the waste is exiting the body as it should and for healing and restoration in Jesus mighty name Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Bless that little sweetheart. I've seen her picture. She is oh, so cute. Yes, Jesus, all things work to your good. All things work to your good. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, um, have prayer for Maurice. Uh, he wants to be sure he's got all his I's dotted and his T's crossed. Um, he had, um, I think it's been a couple weeks ago, he had uh, ch chimed in for um, prayer uh, regarding the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I've given him some video links and whatnot. And he's kind of come to, you know, as he's been sorting things out, he's realized that when he was at church and opportunity knocked, he went for the baptism in the Holy Spirit, but he kind of omitted the sinner's prayer. <laughs> and so he's thinking about that, and it's just, you know, it's... It's a beautiful process because the Lord's bringing things to mind, sins that he's had in the past and whatnot, and that's a very good thing. Of course, when you're going through it, you're you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm such a sinner. Oh my gosh, you know, the more and more you remember, but it's because it's it's not with you anymore. It's you want to be rid of it. You want to be free. So... Um, it's good because those sins are coming to mind, the desire to be clean and holy. So let's get back to the basics, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think the kids got one of these little track brochures at Awana. And uh, when they were in it last year. So let's just do the basics. You know, it doesn't really matter. You know... I've had amazing things happen to me. Um, there was one year I was going to college and I had like a 35 minute commute. And I would always turn on the radio, listen to Christian radio and stuff. And I don't know, it's like God can work through anything. I don't even like to dog um, your televangelists. You know, a lot of them are money, 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 money. But at the same time, it doesn't matter. God, God will use what He will. He will work how He works, and He will work however. You know, we know that, Lord, I did this in Your name. Lord, I did that in Your name. Clearly, ministers, clearly people that are aligning, you know, doing everything. But there is something missing. He says, away from me, I never knew you. So there's something of where we can take precepts and things and then take it upon ourselves and take glory for ourselves and 
you know, become some big hot shot or whatever. But it doesn't matter. They did healings or whatever in their name. God is still going to credit that. So even in, even in a little book or if you're listening to the, on the radio or whatever and God is going to, his purpose will be accomplished. So I just, I just thought I'd pray this. It says, Lord Jesus, I want to know you personally. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins and giving me eternal life. Take control of the throne of my life. Make me be the kind of person you want me to be. Amen. Amen. It's, it's those components. I want you, Jesus. I believe who you are. I can't do it anymore. I'm a sinner. I seek your forgiveness. And then I receive it. I thank you for your promises, giving me eternal life, and then I give you over my life. I say take control. That's the gist of the sinner's prayer. So what is it in baptism of the Holy Spirit? It's going a little bit further. So we've kind of went a backwards way. I'm not going to go into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I wanted to do this, let's, let's cover the basis, because there are some people out there that just don't know where to begin. And that's the tenets of where you begin. Then the rest of, of the process, he's already begun. Um, you know, starting to re recognize those sins and being sorrowful for them, not wanting them anymore. And... What comes next is, is the manifestation of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for drawing Maurice to recognize. Thank you, Jesus, that your spirit is speaking through him so much. And maybe he doesn't recognize it or, or accredit it, but you, you are moving through him big time already. And he is, is flowing right along with you. And I thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, for my brother in the Lord. I just ask that you would encourage him and build him up in your most holy faith. Oh, what the hey. Let's, it, it's not that much more. Those of you want to... <laughs> Uh, go that further step to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I I like to visualize, and I've done this before on here, where I visualize when Jesus went to John, the baptizer, at the river. And that is where he was revealed. And that's where his ministry began. Why? Why? Because when that dove came down and God spoke, this is my son and whom I'm well pleased, that's when the power came. Everything from that moment on, that was the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So Lord Jesus, we just come to you. And we thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. Because baptism, where we might recognize our need in everything, in baptism of the Holy Spirit, we are yielding so much more to the promise through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the promise of power. So, Lord Jesus, we just ask. You say, if we ask, we shall receive. And we do ask for the, your most holy baptism in the Holy Spirit. 
because we turn ourselves over to you, Lord Jesus. And this prayer kind of mingled over, take control of the throne of my life. It's kind of mingled a little bit of both. But baptism in the Holy Spirit is really saying, take it, Lord Jesus, that I may be your empty and willing vessel to pour out as rivers of living water your Holy Spirit in power. I receive all that you have for me, Lord Jesus. And I receive the physical manifestations of your most holy presence. If uh, you're praying along, and your tongue starts to feel a little funny, just roll with it. Say Jesus over and over again. Because of what Maurice really wants is the physical manifestation of evidence with tongues. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. I just ask that you would just light your fire. Put your coal to Maurice's tongue. And he may praise and glorify you, O Lord Jesus. We welcome your holy presence, Lord Jesus. All right, and I want to continue on with this. How can we continue on? Maurice knows those sins and things are coming to mind. And so, what's the further step? The further step is to keep going, keep cleansing, keep going down that path. Um, some people, oh, they'll, they'll feel bad and then they'll roll into a cycle of guilt and they'll fall into a sin or whatever, fall into a cycle of guilt, repent. But they never break free of it. How do we become holy? How do we become pure? Um, so, one thing that we can do um, on our path to purity is write down your shortcomings. It helps. Um, get a piece of paper, write down your sins, write down people that have hurt you, people you have hurt, and use it as a guide. Um, pray through each thing. Pray and pray and pray through each thing. And by the time you get through your list, you, you'll be pretty emotional you, when you really realize, um, you know, how much it is. But also at the end of it, you should feel that liberation. You should be um, not feeling guilty at the end of it, you know. You should feel like, yes, I have turned this over to the Lord. I have forgiven, I have received forgiveness, I have broken free of this, okay? And then what I want you to do is crumble that paper up. Crumble it up and burn it. <laughs> burn it as if it never were. And then this is something that you can do every so often. Um, some things we can discipline ourselves with. And this is one of those things, is every so often you can begin to just go back and do that list again. And sometimes when you're doing the list, you'll be like, you know what, that doesn't hurt anymore. I don't feel my spirit, I don't feel the churning anymore. Oh my gosh, I'm over this thing, you know. When you're, when you're praying or whatever, if there's things vibrating within you, um, then you, there's still more there. Could be wounding, more forgiveness. But over time, things will start to not even be on that list anymore. Um, if you do it on a regular basis, 
like maybe once a month. I don't know. Make up your own rules. <laughs> Ask Father God. But um, you'll be amazed because some of the things that maybe hurt you very deeply, all of a sudden you have this eternal perspective about it all. And suddenly someone who's transgressed you and hurt you so badly, suddenly you have the heart of Jesus for them and you say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And God has just changed the whole focus around for you. And so in the place where you were hurt and wounded the most, you have this incredible power for love and healing and restoration to, to pour out to others. So that's that's an awesome kind of little exercise I wanted to share with, with you all. Um, and it's really, it'll get you excited because like I said, when you go back through and you remember, oh yes, and you write that down and you're like, but that doesn't hurt anymore. I don't even need that on my list anymore. It's gone. Yay. So anyhow, um, give it a try. It's awesome. All right. Let's get back to prayer. I'm hopping back off the bunny trail. <laughs> oh, okay. Andy says, that is the gospel. Let the signs and wonders flow. Amen. Um, and I, I want to share this little thing from Andy. Um, he said uh, he was in a men's group and they were praying about um, folks meeting Jesus through us. And the word that he got from the Lord is that what that we were asking for his compassion. And Andy felt like that was a really deep thing. And it's really true. Um, anytime where I've had a dream, and the shorter the dream, the way more expanded in all the information is crammed in there. I don't understand it, but... Um, if we can imagine, like, the Word of God is like that, too. How many times you go back to one passage and something new comes out all the time. But it's the same with that. Um, we're asking for His compassion. And I can testify, I failed in this this past week. It was uh, early, early, early in the week, um, I had went to a store and I had a rough, I, I was running ragged and when I was in the store I'm like okay gotta get in, gotta get out, got things to do and I'm tired and when I went in I saw this woman with this you know she she was an old old lady but something something had happened to where she was injured and she had this little walker thing and I share with you guys I failed what what I felt within me was like how how do I have strength how do I have energy to do this stuff all the time and I just I rebelled um I I saw myself it like in a vision, going up and ask, asking her how this, how, how that happened that she got in this state. And when I saw that in my mind, I just decided, no, I'm not doing it. I'm tired. I got things to do. Blah, 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 blah. I missed the mark. And what did I really miss was his compassion. If I would have... If I can latch onto his compassion, who may, what, what does it care about strength? If I can think about his compassion, would I not ask for him to strengthen me, as the scriptures say? Yeah. So this word really touches me a lot, too, because I didn't have compassion this week. I didn't. So there's, there's the Human Freedoms 01 that you guys know. Uh, screwed up again. I need his compassion very badly. So, 
Bereba kiraba sikiraba kapa brashi berati kibara sibe. So, along these lines, I am really entering in with with what you got, Andy. Uh, and those of you that really desire compassion as well. We need to do Bible Promise series, uh, play it on compassion. Lord Jesus, we just ask that you would grow indeed your compassion. Because there is so much to distract us and to try and rob us and derail us from your truth. Plant that seed of compassion within you. And we receive that, Lord Jesus. We receive that. Help us to water and to grow that seed of compassion that you have given us. That we will not love our lives unto death that we will see as you see we will hear as you hear in all of our senses that we will align with your heart and forgive us for our shortcomings forgive us for those times where we just focused on the natural I repent of that Lord Jesus and I thank you for your hand of forgiveness upon us. Help us, Lord, to pick up back where we left off. Where we left off. Grow us in your compassion, Lord Jesus. That true agape love. And I do declare that we do have strength, that we do have time. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the author of time and nothing is impossible with you. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that the lies of the enemy fall down, void and powerless against us. Thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. And declare your hand of victory over our lives and lives filled with your blessed compassion. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Okay. Um, there's been some prayer requests. People have been losing some loved ones. Um... I want to pray for Tracy and family. Uh, her father had a massive heart attack while, while driving, and he crashed. And I don't know everything, but uh, I don't know if it was the crash, uh, because he was revived apparently um, a little bit, but I don't know if, uh, you know, if it was the crash, if it was the heart attack, or whatever happened. But, you know, when stuff like this happens... Um, and the thing is with her is she is in the medical field. And so there's a tendency if, if you're, if you're in like a medical field or something and you would know what the symptoms of a heart attack or whatever would be. And you could see how she might take, take his death upon herself thinking I should have seen it, I should have known, or, or whatever, um, and beat herself up. And so we just reject that right now in the name of Jesus. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would fill the family with your comfort and your love. We break any confessions right now that she snap out of it and not confess anything that would put her in uh, guilt or bondage uh, for years to come or or to drag to do something that would drag it upon her children as well thank you Lord Jesus you give that family peace 
Si Bambu was a pony, Canada, Calgary. Me, Meta, Tikita, Baka. I also asked Lord Jesus that you would use this time to move upon Tracy and her entire family for salvation. For tomorrow is not promised to anyone. And I just ask for a true revelation, Me, Me, Baka, Ni, Baka, of this transient world we live in, and that she would. Draw, draw close, close to you, Lord Jesus, that this, this incident would get her thinking with an internal perspective. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay. Also, Linda lost her husband, uh, someone on YouTube. Uh, and I don't know the details, but uh, it just seems like she had been having a lot of spiritual warfare for a long time and so don't know all the gist of it but there is pain there is pain in this that you are you became as our a suffering servant Lord Jesus and you take that pain upon yourself and I thank you, Lord Jesus. Mama Baba Pakita, for joy comes in the morning. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just heal her heart. Heal her heart, strengthen her to carry on. With your banner, Lord Jesus. Looking forward to that expected end. Where her husband is waiting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give her strength each and every day. Bless her family, all her relationships with peace. In Jesus' name we pray. So, if anybody's got any prayer requests, please do text them or info at hearinggod.tv we are here to pray for you um this past week one of the things i've shared with you all um i get songs stuck in my head and they're not all christian songs either uh remember i was saying earlier how the lord will use what he will he's used you know the wealth of the wicked you know will go to the righteous we know that it doesn't matter uh, over and over again in the scriptures especially in the Old Testament it says God laughs because of you know the enemy is always standing there at the door always there accusing us standing there oh can I do this oh can I do this oh can I do this anything wicked and evil against us okay and yes God can allow it. God isn't instigating. He isn't saying, yeah, do it or whatever. But he can grant permission. And some of that is, you know, you, you know that if you are in sin or doing wicked things, that you can be handed over. You can be handed over and um, and and lose your protection from the Lord. And Satan will wail on you. But at the same time, you know, Satan's always there accusing. And sometimes God allows Satan to do things because in the end, it's giving God glory. Because it's, a, it's, you, it's allowed as a test so that you can shine. Especially in areas of temptation, areas of struggle that you've had. And uh, Satan says, oh, you know, they're this and this and this and they're going to fall and blah, blah, blah. And God says, oh, yeah? Let's see. And when you prove the devil wrong, uh, you give such glory to God. So anyhow, um, another tangent. <laughs> uh, the song I got... Uh, it's from Ricky Martin called The Cup of Life. 
I'm going to read some of the lyrics. Um, I don't think Ricky Martin really sings very good songs or whatever, but there isn't anything bad in this song. Um, and I don't, I don't sit here and like listen to secular stuff all the time. Um, it's just, I'll, I might hear bits and pieces out in the world and then the Lord will put, put something in my head and then I have to research, well, what is that? This song I knew a little bit more, um, so I was able to know what song it was by the melody and, the, and some of the lyrics, but I still had to look up the lyrics because some of them are in Spanish and I didn't know what they meant, so I had to look up the Spanish meaning. So anyhow, um, Cup of Life, this is the one, now is the time, don't even stop, push it along, gotta be strong, push it along right to the top. What is the song about? Persevering. That's exciting because a lot of us have had a lot of problems, you know, it's been hard, admittedly. Um, so we got to keep pressing on, pushing on. Um, so then some of the uh, Spanish lyrics, it says, and when you feel that heat, the world is at your feet. No one can hold you down if you really want it. Just steal your destiny right from the hands of fate. Reach for the cup of life because your name is on it. Our name's written in the book of life too. <laughs> And uh, who wants to steal our destiny, huh? There's a lot in there. Um, here's another part. The feeling in your soul is going to take control. Could that be the Holy Spirit? Nothing can hold you back if you really want it. If you're aligning with His will, His Holy Spirit. I see it in your eyes. That's exciting. It's like Jesus is singing the song to us. You want the cup of life. Now that the day is here, this acceptable day, <laughs> we're going to go get it. Do you really want it? Yeah! <laughs> and then the very last part, the cup of life, the world is ours today. Amen. Very exciting stuff. So I just wanted to share that with, with more of you um, to... Press in, press in. It's difficult. Um, but he is encouraging everywhere, through everything, saying, come, come, come. Don't look at those hard things. Don't look at the trials and your emotions, your feelings. Cling to me in my truth. So praise God. Um... Awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Andy was bringing to my attention that uh, the London Mayor Boris Johnson says the nation needs to move beyond the Stone Age by redefining marriage. And of course, issues like this, there's always the whole gay thing hiding in there, you know. Um, anti-covenant, anti-Bible, anti-everything. Uh, but it's interesting. Um, it says that the Prime Minister David Cameron avoided mentioning his controversial gay marriage policy in his keynote speech at the Tory party conference. And then it said last weekend it was revealed that over 70% of Tory constituency chairmen want the plans to be dropped and nearly half say they have lost members because of the policy so you know I want to say as in the days of Noah you know it's uh, you know another, another thing Andy was talking about you know it's the same thing with Obama um, you know, Obama's believe, you know, states there's, there's many ways to heaven. Uh, here, here's a quote that he, he said. He says, I'm rooted in the Christian tradition. And this is of Obama who has declared himself a Christian. 
But then he adds something that most Christians will see as universalism. I believe there are many paths to the same place. And that is a belief that there is a higher power, a belief that we are connected as a people. Here's Obama again. I don't presume to have knowledge of what happens after I die. I do. <laughs> when I tuck my daughters at, in at night, and I feel like I've been a good father to them, I see I am transferring values that I got from my mother and that they're kind people and that they're honest people and that they're curious people and that's a little piece of heaven. You know, it's all that, oh, I'm a good person thing. So, uh, one cannot deny central tenets of the Christian faith, including the deity and uniqueness of Christ as the sole mediator between God and man and be a Christian. Such people do have a label applied to them in scripture. They're called a false prophet. <laughs> um, you know, and I'm talking about the days, as in the days of Noah. I want to share with you... Um, this happened to me and my husband a few years ago in the business that my husband was in. He had an associate that uh, was gay and, you know, it's hard because you're, you're showing the love of Christ to people or whatever and their mind is elsewhere, okay? And so... I can remember we had like a, a little gathering or something and he just went on to tell me this story and basically it was that I, I think he was trying to say do a parable to see where we were and try to defile us to see you know but he actually his little parable story, I don't know if it was true or not, he said, oh, when I lived in, in such and such a state, I, I worked for this man and this wife couple, and blah, 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 you know, something about they were swingers or something or whatever, and, you know, it was just like, bleh. And so I pulled my husband aside, and I said, did you hear what he just said? And my husband's like, well, what? You know, yeah, it's gross. Ugh. And I said, he's trying to feel us out. You know, he's always remarking about our kids. It's like he could see himself in our family as like a threesome kind of sicko thing. It's just... It's the days of Noah. <laughs> and that's why it's so hard. Because we're getting to a point here where the wickedness is just so... It's The darkness is so dark. Trying, you know, it's trying to turn us. Um, isn't that horrible? <laughs> But I want to share because it's just, you know, there's just so much in this world that it just tries to defile and to rip us down and to just, and I'm sorry that's, that, that's an end, end note there, but, oh, what did, what did you say, Andy? One single for the arc, please. <laughs> The ark, the ark of the covenant, kind of. Thing. No. Oh, the the ark is in. Uh, save us a spot for the ark, Lord Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I I know all too well of um, how horrible this stuff is, and and you're trying to be in the world and to be that light, and to show the love of Christ and people are not, you know, you can't make them choose God. And even, you know, he admired us as a family. He could look and he's saying he admires our kids and he admired us, but 
in his own twisted way. You know, it's like he couldn't. Ugh. Yeah, let's all get on the boat. Ugh. So, anyhow, um, does anybody else have any prayer requests or anything um, specific to your situation or whatever? Um, oh, I guess I could pray for, continue to pray for you, James. I don't know if I wrote everything down in my... Sometimes I jump around on my prayer list and then I end up missing stuff and I don't want to do that. Okay. Lord Jesus, I just pray for James. Our brother James. Regarding organic brain dysfunction. And we declare that it is not dysfunction, but we continue to look and agree for that new brain. With perfectly functioning synapse, everything hardwired beautifully. We declare, Lord Jesus, we declare that you promise your power. And by the baptism in your Holy Spirit, we did receive that. We did submit ourselves to you, that we would be rivers of living water, and we proclaim your perfect will. And that is that all be restored and be made new and be healed. As you see us, not by labels or anything on a dry wipe wall, dry wipe board wall, we don't declare that. We declare that banished by the blood of Jesus. And so, Lord God, we just agree. We agree for that perfect brain. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you and thank you, Lord Jesus, for the manifestation of James's perfectly functioning brain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing them all. And we we align with that, Lord Jesus. We align with that. Jesus. We declare life over James, over his body, and restoration over his body. We, we bind up pain racked in the name of Jesus. We place pain racked beneath the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. Abundant peace, abundant life. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you give. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, any other prayer requests? Yeah, peace. Um, J. Mark had to go. Um, he had to go help his elderly neighbor. So we'll just pray for him. Bless him, Lord Jesus. And all that he's doing to help his elderly neighbor. Elderly neighbor. Hey, say that fast a few times. Elderly neighbor. Bless that neighbor, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for J. Mark and, and all that he's doing to help. We also agree... Because we were praying for his new heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We do indeed declare a new heart. That it be manifest. We declare perfectly electrically functioning. That every, every muscle impulse fire. Exactly when it's supposed to. 
because it's a brand new heart in Jesus' mighty name. Mama, shaking a bucket, bucket, bucket. Fill him with your peace and your love and your joy. You know, I've, I've talked about a forum in the past, and I've had such problems trying to get one on the Stickam thing working. I think I might actually have a forum solution now. And I think it's all going to work okay. I just can't figure out how to structure it. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely investigating. But it is, uh, it's going to be like a free forum. It's not going to be like a burden uh, financially or anything. But uh, I think it's going to work. Um, I just, I really got to work on the structure thing. Um, but I'm excited because in, in that way, uh, people can begin to share more. I, I often ask some of you to share with me spiritual experiences, giftings, things that you have. Um, because it's, you know, what you pull on, you receive. And, and you know this is true because there are people out there that, you know, follow ministries around and then they begin to flow in those same manifestations of, you know, let's, let's say a, a particular ministry has a dominion over cancer. And then it seems, you know, it's, it just works that way where people who really have entered in and supported and done whatever with that ministry begin to operate in the same fashion and begin to get a lot of healings regarding cancer. And so this, this is with everything under the sun though. And so that's why I often encourage people with, um, you know, if you have any video capability or any way to share and multiply what the Lord has shared and done with you, uh, to share like on YouTube or whatever, because I testify. Um, uh, every when I get nuggets from the Lord and I share it, I, I I get I'll get feedback and somebody will be like, "Wow, you know," and it's just changed my life and la 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 la, and. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, when I first started down this path, I wish there was someone like me, you know, sharing this stuff as well. Unfortunately, it seems like in our society, people tend to share in a book or something which you have to purchase. And it's just, you end up buying all this stuff and all this stuff. And you end up going broke. And maybe that ministry only had one little tiny facet. And then they slapped all the stuff on this side and this side. But you really just needed that one preset. And so I like to encourage people. Give that one preset. That one golden nugget out there. So that people can cling and just boost from it. So very excited about the, the forum thing and so that is a prayer topic please pray um, that I'll be able to set it up and figure it out and yes Andy the more you give the more you get amen so um, the forum um, I want that compassion pretty bad <laughs> I do so, yeah, and it's just been busy, and I can't ask you to say, Oh, Lord, give her vacation. Let her run through daisy fields and do nothing. Mm -hmm. So, anyhow, uh, if I have the compassion, I think I can work around the other stuff. But anyhow, um, you get any prayer requests during the week, go ahead and, and mail them to info at hearinggod.tv and praise reports, very cool, send them in, 